am Elizabeth Kripe, Executive Director of Malachi's Message. Today, I get to have Ryan Richardson as our guest on our podcast platform, Toxic Mold Sucks. Ryan, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us. Both Emily actually introduced me to you, and then you emailed me, and she was so impressed. So those of you that don't know, Ryan hosts a YouTube channel that we're going to be talking about in a little bit. And we were both so impressed with the fact that one, you've put countless hours into this, which you can tell because they are not cheesy. They're done well. And two, you're really pushing for mold awareness, which is something that is the heart of our mission. It's the the heart of what we're doing. And we are just so excited to be able to have you come on here and tell people about what you're doing. But before we get to that, because I'm excited for that, uh, would you mind sharing with people just kind of how you got to this point? So you had your own mold journey, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've known about mold for about eight years now. Um, and it's just, it's just been part of my life. I just, it's like, there's no going back, you know, <laughs> once you know about mold, you, you it changes your life. So, um, so yeah, uh, I decided to get involved in the community and, um, you know, try to offer something back to people that can help them because it's a desperate community and we need any help we can get. And um, if I see some kind of, you know, way I can input, then I'm, I'm all for it and to, and to spread my message, you know, and, um, and yeah, basically help people um, and mainly for like, uh, like parents, because parents, a lot of parents have no idea. That's like one of the main things that I wanted to uh, like, you know, bring awareness to. and. Um, and yeah, because it's, you know, people need to know about this, but uh, I think it's getting a lot more attention um, in the past couple of years. So I'm glad to be a part yeah. of it. And thank yeah, you. Yeah, the last decade has kind of it started to surface more publicly what's yeah. going on. Where did your first exposure to mold happen? How did this even come on your radar? Because I know most of us, we don't know about it until we've been in it and then we know about it. And like you said, there's no going back. So when for you was that first trigger of, oh, this is a very real thing. I should probably be paying attention to this. Um, well, I had no idea what it was or what was causing my symptoms. Um, I had a, um, a contractor I was working with. Uh, he had come over my house for something and um, he looked in my garage and, and he was the one that, that told me about it. And this, this was in the very beginning of 2017. So I guess it's what been six years. Um, yeah, about six years since I've known. So I had no idea what was going on. Um, I came to work one day and he literally asked me, he's like, is something wrong? You know, and I'm like, you know, man, like, I, I don't know. I just can't sleep right. I can't, I can't think right. Like I'm not, my vision's a little blurry. And he goes, he goes, you know, um, your garage is covered in, in mold. And my bedroom was literally drywall, this thick of drywall in between the garage. And that was it. It was just sheetrock and the garage and my room was there. My um, so I don't know, his, his solution was like to bleach the whole thing. And, you know, I was like, well, well, before I do all that, because I know bleach is, is toxic and, and stuff. I was like, well, before I do all that, let me uh, investigate first and everything. And, um, and yeah, just you know, going on Google and going on Facebook. And that's how I guess I came here today, you know, so that's how I became aware of it. Yeah. How long were you in that home before you hit that point? Do you mind me asking? Um, sure. It, it was about, I'd say about a year, like a year and four months before I even knew about it. Wow. That's, yeah, that's a good length of time. Yeah. And, and then you figured out there was mold. And from there, what process did you go through? Did you stay in that home? Did you have it remediated? Um, well, in, in the beginning, uh, I didn't really know what to do. Um, I started, I, I knew I had to leave that room I was in because I was living in like a renovated basement with family. So that was that was the main thing. There's no landlord. There was no, you know, apartment or no, there's nobody to like come after because it was like, you know, my family. Um, so um but they didn't believe me. They were just like, you know, it's, they're just playing it off. Like it's nothing. And, you know, um, one day I looked in my closet and there's literally like mold growing on my hats and my shirts. And I was like, this is a bigger problem than, than, you know, 
I'm realizing. And um, so, um, and it, it took me a little bit to put like put it together that all my symptoms were from this. Yeah. And um, and that like, you know, I mean, <laughs> it just took me to like get you know get I guess the mold rate takes over, and it just took you to go on Facebook and then you know and learn about it and. So yeah, I don't know if that, if that answers your question. <laughs> <laughs> Did, so are you at a point now where you're still in a position where you're in a toxic place? Or are you at the point where you feel like you've healed quite a bit this many years out? Yeah, well, it, it turns, I just found out about a month ago that there's actually mold in this house too that I'm in. So it's, <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I've, been, I've been running away for the past yeah, six, seven years and I, I just can't get away from it. Um, so right now I'm renting out a house from a friend um, and they have the, the garage is locked because he has all his important stuff in there. And the garage is literally right under my room. And there's a bathroom right here and it's leaking into the garage and I couldn't get in there to see what's going on. But I'm, I'm feeling the sensitivity symptoms. So I know I'm living in it uh, again. So yeah, I'm getting re-exposed <laughs> and um, trying to get out again. So yeah how before we jump into what you're doing now i do want to ask because i know this is something that a lot of people just so they don't feel as alone on this journey how did your life change after you figured out and this will kind of segue into what you're doing but how did your life change what is different about it after being exposed to mold as opposed to your life before mold um everything was like going good everything was normal i had an apartment uh, girlfriend, I had, you know, friends, I had every relationships, everything was good. You know, everything was, was normal as far as I can tell. And then, you know, everything just started slowly declining. Like my, my attitude was changing. That was like a big thing. Like, uh, it was mainly like, like the rage I was getting, I would have a quick temper and it yeah. kind of like pushed people away. And, um, so, um, yeah, so, I mean, it messed with my job. Um, it just, it really changed my personality and, uh, I became completely depersonalized, like 100%. Mm -hmm. It was, it was really bad. Like, uh, to the point where like, I, I couldn't feel emotions, right? Like I couldn't, like there was one day when, um, you know, I was driving, driving my car and like a car pulled out in front of me and, you know, your instinct is to slam on the brakes and, and it, you know, it's supposed to like give you like adrenaline and jolt you, you know? And I didn't feel anything. And it was like, it scared the crap out of me. Cause it's like, you know, I didn't feel any adrenaline. I didn't feel any kind of like, you know, emotion. Like I was almost about to get in a car accident. And I was like, that's when I knew something was like really, really wrong here. And um, so actually before a mold group, I joined uh, depersonalization groups and tried to, you know, figure out what was going on with me and, until then it led me to the mold and yeah. yeah that's actually more common than people acknowledge in the mold world and partially because of what it does to your body and partially because of the trauma so a lot of people that go through the trauma of mold automatically go to a position where they want to detach from like any form of emotion like naturally their body does that which I'm sure you know and so I think it's really interesting that just even as a trauma response our brains are already really messed up, right? Super inflamed. Like you said, we've got, most of us have had mold rage to some point. And then on top of that, you're going, man, I'm messing up all these relationships. And when you get to the other side, there's been so much damage done that it's oftentimes hard to go back and say, look, it really wasn't me. Like there are all these things impacting me. And at that point it's done so much damage that it, it's heartbreaking. Like that's one of the silent killers with mold is that it does destroy so many relationships unintentionally and it seems like you've experienced that very firsthand yeah yeah definitely um it ruined my relationship with my girlfriend we had broken up um you know with with my family I don't want to get into into detail but you know we had just yeah. disagreements about it and just it's it just makes it so much harder and infuriating and um and and so I had nothing to show anybody that like Hey, look, there's this stuff in the garage that's, that's, you know, that's literally like, like eating at me every day. And I couldn't show any, I didn't even have like a news article. I didn't have like, like nobody around to be like, you know, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's true. 
Yeah, that is, that is that is so hard. So you went a very different route. A lot of people that go through mold want to just get through it. And I have no judgment on that whatsoever because, you know, you do, you want to get through it. You want to get to the other side. You want to see what life looks like to be semi-normal as normal can be. Um, and then there are some people that go, no, this has got to change. And I feel like I'm supposed to be part of the answer in the change. And I have no judgment for either side. I think everybody has their place in their own journeys. And it seems like you feel like part of your journey is helping with the awareness aspect of it. Why did you choose to step into providing awareness instead of just continuing your own healing process and moving outside of the mold industry? Um, well, I mean, there's no way I can find out information that can help people in this situation and just be silent about it. You know, there's no way I can like figure out what's helping me and know that people are out there suffering and I could help them just by whatever, like making a video or, you know, answering the Facebook comments or anything. So I was like, it's just, it's just in my blood to, to try to help people. And especially when, you know, doctors just, you know, how that works and all the money involved. It, it's just, it's almost just like the twilight zone. It's unbelievable that, that, that something like this exists and, you know, and, you know, people just label you, you know, depressed, anxiety, or, you know, dementia. And it's just like, this, this is, somebody has to know about what's really going on. And I can't, I can't, I can't sleep on that, you know? So, um, yeah, so I'm glad I, I could, you know, give back to the community in some way, you know, and it makes me feel good inside, you know, it makes me feel like I'm, I'm, I'm accomplishing something. Um, you know, it makes me, just, you know, yeah, it makes you happy, I guess, you know, so. Yeah. So why the avenue that you went? Why? So actually, let's back up. Would you mind telling people what you've done with your YouTube channel and what you're creating so that they can go look at it themselves? Sure. Um, I wanted to create like, like, a, like a Netflix kind of documentary kind of thing to where like, you know, people can sit on the couch on the TV and watch and watch it because that's, that's kind of how you get into like, you know, convincing and programming people, you know, because all these kind of the podcasts and all the like, you know, all the, all the, like the, I guess the memes and all whatever kind of stuff. It, it's, I don't know. It, it's, I think it's not as convincing as, as like actual people talking about it with like with the news camera there and the news media there. So I feel like that's the best way to convince people. Um, and I'm like, there's nothing out there about this, like nothing. I, I can't believe it. So I was, I was like coming across um, a couple like, um, you know, news, uh, news media clips on YouTube. And then they just kept coming one after another, after another, every time I'd sign on YouTube, I'd see a new, a new clip. And um, I was like, why don't I put these together and, and make some kind of like movie that, that like, you know, you know, you could show people. Cause it's like, if one person's saying it, it's like, ah, it's okay. But if you have literally like 10, 20, 30, 40 people like on the news saying it, then it's like, it's way more believable and convincing to someone who, you know, is in denial about it. And, and, and coming from being around people that don't believe you, it just, it makes it so much worse. And so there has to be something, you know, you can show somebody. So I was like, this is the best avenue to do it, you know, because I mean, you know, people would believe the news more than I think if it's in the news, people would believe that more than, you know, just like a, a text article or, you know, stuff like that. That's interesting because I'm I'm a visual learner. But I'm very source based. You can ask Emily if she was on here, she would be laughing hysterically right, right now because she will send me stuff all the time. And I'm like, where's the source for that? Um, and so I think it's very interesting because I do think there are two groups of people and there are some of us that need to see like the medical research, we need to see the documentation and that's gonna convince me. If I were to watch the news, I'm gonna be totally honest. I think most of the news is incredibly biased. So for, for me, that's not a game changer, but for most of Americans, right? It is like you, you go, that is your main source of what's happening in the world, your main source of, okay, is this real or not? And I think that that is incredibly powerful, especially like you said, for family or friends who might go, well, would I have seen this anywhere? Oh, wait, you watched this new station here. Look, they talked about it. Right. Like the correlation there can be really powerful. 
So you created a YouTube channel and I have watched it and it is about toxic mold in the media. And I think it is incredible. There were so many more stories in the news than I even knew about when I went through and watched your videos. What are some of the main trends or things that has stood out to you as you've been putting these um, short videos together? So you're watching news outlets from all over the U.S. and some from like the BBC, if I remember correctly, right? So not just the U.S. And you're seeing all these clips. What are some of the things that stood out to you when you were putting these together? Yeah, um, the main things that stood out was like a lot of the same uh, symptoms people were describing. Um, and and the fact that like there, like there's no answer. People would say that like, there's no help, like there's nobody to talk to. That's why people contact the news because they're like, that's the last resort. They're like, this is crazy. And like, I gotta call, you know, I gotta call the news. It's a big thing. No one's believing me. Um, and and um another, I guess the big thing was like was the kids, the kids getting sick because you know, they don't have a voice, they can't come on Facebook and ask questions, you know. Um, and it's a lot of videos with with parents and their kids, and and that was like this, you know. People have to know, you know, that, you know, to look out for the stuff if they have kids. And yeah, so that was the main thing for, you know, help the children in some way. Cause it's in schools too. I've seen a lot of the school videos too. There's a lot more I didn't put up yet. It's something you don't even think about as a parent or a student, you know, you don't even think about that. And every day, it's, if it's making you worse and, and sick in the school and you have to go to that place that's making you sick, it's, so people have to like know about that. It's it's unbelievable. <laughs> We'd like to take a minute and thank one of Malachi's message tier three sponsors, the Harmon Company. At the Harmon Company, they know manufacturing equipment. For more than six decades, they have provided products, value engineering, and support to get your equipment to perform flawlessly. With their large inventory centrally located in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, they provide high-quality components to manufacturers in a wide variety of industries. To learn more, visit www.harmanco.com. Well, it's crazy. We've had um, somebody that I know, and I'm not going to say their name uh, for their privacy, but they went to a bunch of school districts in Texas, and they went to specific schools and asked for their latest mold assessment. And most of them said, we don't have to do it. And so most of them knew, right, concretely, hey, there's mold in here. One even did remediation with the students in the classroom, right. like without proper PPE. And you're exactly correct because these parents, even if they know about mold and they get it taken care of in their home, most of us are in such a desperate place. We're like, yes, I finally got my home fixed. I can help my kids heal. And then you're missing that next connection of, oh, it could be in their schools right. or it could be like my girls, even at some of their friends' houses when we came out of mold, like, mom, we can't go play there. Like, I feel really sick when I come home. Like, okay. Right. Like there's another layer there that, well, shit you know, like where is safe. So I think it's vitally important. I agree with the schools. I think that needs to be one of the next big things that is attacked because it's everywhere. And this is, this is making kids so, so sick. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, um, and yeah, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable. And it's, it's like, how would anybody know about that? You know, if it wasn't in, you know, in the news media. Yeah. So I was like, people have to see this. And, and most of these videos have been, have been like buried. I mean, some of them are like seven years old, eight years old, and they only have like 10 views. Some of them only have like, you know, maybe like 50 and like, no one has seen this. You know, it's very well, all of them are like very well done. Like, you know, and yeah. it's like, why would it be, you know, buried? And that that's it. This is a really big thing. People have to see this. So, um, yeah, I actually have a lot more to make too. I just haven't got to it yet. <laughs> so why do you think these are being buried? Why do you think it's taking somebody like you to come out and put all this together? And I, I believe they're being buried. Like I said, a lot of them I hadn't seen and it's it's stuff that I have looked up before, right? With what I do. So why do you think they are being buried? Why do you think we're 10 years and stuff is finally starting to show up? Um, well, yeah, without YouTube. In your opinion. 
Uh, well, yeah, without YouTube, we wouldn't probably ever see them. Um, so it's like the local media outlets are uploading them. And then, you know, I guess they're uploading all kinds of stuff on top of that. So no one ever can really get to it unless you search and search and search. I literally searched for probably one time, like one day it was like three hours just scrolling down YouTube constantly and, and saving every video. So they're like way down there. But I don't know if they're buried by like on purpose. I think it's just, you know, they just cover it real quick and move on to something else. Um, so maybe it's not maybe it's not done intentionally, but um, but it is being buried and and it's like they never talk about it anymore. Um, you know, mm -hmm. on the mainstream, it's all like local, you know, cities and stuff like that. Um, but there was that one on the mainstream. Uh, it was, um, I don't know, we were we were all waiting for it in the group. Uh, it was Christina, Christ, uh, the, Christina um, Bear. Yeah, Christina Bear, yeah, the lawyer. Yeah. And it was her story. And I don't know if you remember, um, in the group, uh, like a reporter came in from uh, NBC, I think it was. And they were like, and, uh, um, everybody, you guys can message me your questions. And, you know, we're going to cover this, you know, and in detail and all this stuff. And there were like so many people messaging her, I know. And uh, yeah, and I mean, I'm glad they did her story. Um, but I mean, they only did a four minute piece on something like this. And people were kind of like satisfied that like they covered it. But I'm like, you know, they didn't, there's so many questions they didn't answer that we need answered. Like, you know, there was no, there was no, um, you know, there's no question or answer about like, where do you go to get treatment? Because they said that they got treatment. There's no, um, you know, what did they say to their doctor? Which doctor helped them? Um, you know, there's like, I don't know, just tons of questions that they didn't answer. And I was like, you know, it, it kind of made me mad. So I'm like, you know, I don't know. We have, we have to show more, <laughs> more of these stories um, that, that try to, you know, can cover more questions. That's, so that was what I was trying to get to the bottom of, uh, I guess. But hmm. um, yeah, but I'm glad that they, they, they covered her story because um, her kids, you know, uh, we're we're getting sick and and that was like the main the main thing I you know I don't know I'm passionate about you know for that you know for awareness for the kids and um, yeah that's why I used hers as the first one in, in the the first video I made yeah I saw that mm -hmm. so what is your end goal with this is it just to show people and to hopefully gain some traction. So that people can see what is going on and that family and friends hopefully it'll give some credibility to the reality that toxic exposure does impact you in every way shape and form yeah um yeah it's my end goal yeah it's just that people have a resource to to show their family and their friends even their co-workers their managers bosses they have some kind of resource that it's like hey like you know this is, I'm not the only one, look at all these other people. And it's not just random people on the internet that are, you know, it's actually professionally, <laughs> it's, pro it's professionally done stories. And I think that's what is the, the big convincing factor, um, you know, that can really change people's minds. And, and yeah, I'm glad. That have you, have you been able to hear from anybody on how this has impacted them or how it's been able to help them? Oh yeah, yeah. I've I've gotten a lot of messages actually. Some people, a lot of people thanking me. Um, you know, keep doing, you know, keep doing the good work. Um, a couple of people said that, um, you know, they sat down with their loved ones on the TV and that they watched it and, yeah, mm -hmm. they were they were they were impressed and it helped change the minds of some people. And I'm like, yes, that that was my goal, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you can sit down on the, you know, watch it with your kids even, and, and, you know, and the whole family, you know, everyone doesn't, doesn't have to huddle around a phone or a computer screen or something real, you know? Yeah. So I knew I had to make like some kind of an intro that would be attractive and I, I don't make movies. I don't have any skills in any kind of, you know, um, video editing or anything. Uh, I had a friend who, who had a Adobe Premiere on his computer. So I went to him and said, Hey, let's do this. And yeah, so 
That's really cool. I I do. I mean, it is very cool that, you know, once in a while you see a clip, like, like you said, but the fact that you have streamed so many, so many together on almost every aspect of molds. I remember one even where it talked about SIRS and we have a SIRS fund and that hit for me too. I was like, man, this is being talked about, but like you said, it's not being talked about regularly. It's not being talked about as something that is okay to talk about. We say all the time in this industry, right? You say the word cancer, there's an automatic, like it's a trigger word that hits your mind and your body and everything in such a unique way. You say mold and it does not have even close to that same impact. And I'm not saying it should, but, but it should, right? Like it is something that's impacting how many, how many Americans and people around the world. And so to put all these clips together is so powerful. Like, thank you for what you're doing, because most of us don't have the time to do that. And we need it so badly. Instead of just saying, look at this one clip. No, go look at these seven clips that are streamed together. Like, I swear, I'm not crazy. It's very cool what you're doing. Oh, thank you. And um, yeah, another thing I think I heard Emily say, she said, um, that she was glad that her husband got sick be so that he could understand it. Yeah. And it's like, that's crazy. That sounds crazy that you'd have that. You're just, you're happy someone else understands it because they got sick. It's like, you know, imagine it's like, oh, I have cancer. Oh, I'm glad you have cancer too. So right. you understand it, you know, it's like, that's, it's unbelievable that no one knows about it. And yeah, you know, um, so I think this is the start to like a big, a big, um, you know, awakening, you know, of, of people yeah, to, un I to understand it. I agree. I think it's very cool that this is part of it though. So where can people go if they want to check, learn more about you or check out your YouTube channel? Where can people go? Uh, my YouTube channel is Toxic Mold Media. It's at Toxic Mold Media. Um, you can just type in the search Toxic Mold Exposure Stories in the media and, and you'll see it'll, it'll pop up. Um, yeah, I don't have any other social media about it now. Um, I didn't, you know, get that far yet. Um, so eventually there will be, you know, you know, like, you know, Instagram I'll make and stuff like that when I get the time and, and a website There's definitely going to be a website. Um, you know, I'm going to have all the, all the videos listed in, in a row that people can, can watch and, you know, maybe, you know, turn into a foundation and, you know, and stuff like that and where people can donate. Um, I have some things planned, but, you know, this is just the start so far. So that's really cool. And we'll make sure we include the link to the YouTube channel with this uh, video and on all of our social media platforms attached to the podcast. Thank you, Ryan, so much. This was, this was awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Oh, 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 oh